So it has been warmer today, but not much. It's going to hang right around there in the upper 30s throughout the course of the day, and then we'll see a lot of rain before things clear out for the rest of the week. Uh, there's been a lot of a discussion over the weekend on whether or not Ted Cruz, who is the man in second place right now nationally among Republicans polled in the, uh, the race for the White House, the, the nomination of his party, that is, as a Republican, on whether or not his comments about the New York uh, state of mind or New York attitude when he was referring to Donald Trump is harming Ted Cruz among voters. Now, if you're, a, if you're a member of the media elite that actually lives and works in New York, you didn't like Ted Cruz in the first place. The latest is, the argument now is, well, Ted Cruz means Jews. He means liberal Jews aren't like other people around the country. Ted Cruz is an anti-Semite. Yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. Ted Cruz is from Texas, and he's a uh, Southern Baptist and an evangelical, and Ted, Ted Cruz, therefore, doesn't like Jews. And he meant, see, he was just saying, he was just saying Jews. And even Saturday Night Live did a sketch with it where Cruz says, I couldn't get away with saying Jews, so I had to say that instead. Uh, it's, it seems that they feel that this is the end of his campaign. And then Kevin Williamson, who's a writer over at National Review, a uh, very good writer, I should point out, also says it was a huge mistake because Cruz, as you know, Cruz is actually taking on people who live in big cities. And 80% of the voters, according to Williamson, live in big cities. See, the difference is, though, if, if you're living in a big city and it's called Salt Lake, or if you're living in a big city and it's called, I don't know, Spokane, or Billings, or uh, Albuquerque, or, well, maybe that we wouldn't want to throw in a state for a big city in New Mexico. They're fairly liberal there. But if you're living in a, in a city outside of New York City, do you really care? <laughs> I'm so, it, it's not exactly like people are going, hmm, I live in Chicago, and when New York is insulted, I feel awful. Or how about, I live in Denver, and when Pittsburgh is insulted and we crush their football team, uh, it makes me feel awful. I really feel for those Steelers fans and the people of Pittsburgh. No, you don't. No, you don't. So here you've got media again trying to create something out of nothing. Uh, even in the, the Saturday Night Live sketch, Cruz was asked about this, the guy playing Cruz. And he says that uh, New Yorkers are known, of course, for a lot of bad things, including, well, he used a word that started with an M, but it means self-abuse. That is, self-manipulation. And, you know, it's supposed to be funny, part of the sketch uh, on, uh, on a TV show that is generally far left-leaning in the first place and always has been in the 40-some years that it's been on air. Not necessarily funny, but very left-leaning. And then I came across this today, a website called Chicks on the Right. I don't want to accept this is real, the writer says. I refuse. According to the source link, New York City now has what some are calling a, quote, masturbation station, unquote, or guy-fi booth. It's a convenient place where men can go and relieve stress. The sex toy company, Hot Octopus, placed the booth on the 28th Street and 5th Avenue corner. So if you're visiting the city anytime soon, avoid that area. <laughs> The Gi-Fi station is basically like a phone booth, providing men with a chair, laptop, and convenient little curtain for privacy. Now, I don't want to take just one conservative website's word for this, so I did some searching on the Internet. And speaking of Internet, New York City and, and one of the local companies that used to put up phone booths, they are now dotting the city with these booths where you can go check your Internet access. Or you get internet access and then you can check your web. Or maybe you're checking something else. Or it's web, I don't, well, it's getting into some sticky, well, we don't want to go there either. But I'm telling you right now, this is going on. And New York City is going to be setting up these kiosks for people so they can pull out their their laptop or they can pull out their, uh, their, their, their what do you call those things, your pad. Or you can pull out something else. And what you can do is you can sit in this booth and you have privacy behind a curtain. And you can do, I guess, whatever you do when you're on the internet. You get my drift here, don't you? So when Ted Cruz talks about a New York state of mind, um, he might be onto something here. And then the writer at Chicks on the Right says, Hot Octopus was inspired by a timeout survey, which concluded that 39% of the New York men it questioned admitted to masturbating while at work. 
No, that would be um, that would be a large number. Uh, that would be uh, over a third, not half, but still. I, I, maybe Ted Cruz is spot on when he talks about some of the things that take place in New York City that wouldn't necessarily take place in his uh, his uh, home state of Texas. Nine thirteen. Bill Colley with you on top story on News Radio thirteen ten. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Thank you. Hey, we're up to 40. So my predictions of a high today uh, in the uh, the upper 30s already blasted out of the way. So there are th- some things, yes, uh, most of the time I'm right, but occasionally there are some things I do get wrong. Uh, 40 degrees right now at our studios here at News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You can hear us anywhere all over the world online. Uh, go to the website and just click on that Listen Live icon. If you'd like to give us a telephone call today, 736-0300, 736-0300. Now, you know there are going to be politicians in New York who say there's nothing wrong about any of this. In fact, I think that uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio has been spotted going in and out of these uh, booths, checking the Internet access multiple times a day. I have this as well from Eric Erickson, who is a huge, huge fan of Ted Cruz. Erickson, a frequent, as I pointed out, frequent fill-in for Rush Limbaugh. Uh, Limbaugh's program, which you hear right uh, right here on this radio station uh, between 10 o'clock in the morning and 1 o'clock every afternoon, Monday through Friday. Headline at Erickson's website, How I Know Ted Cruz Has Major Momentum. A few months ago, if you put up a post on an internet website that said Donald Trump doing nothing, the post would still get tens of thousands of hits. He says that's less and less the case these days. Now instead, it's Ted Cruz's turn. And he says at his own website, which is just two weeks old, They put up a story about Ted Cruz on Saturday. It got 100,000 hits. He says this piece alone uh, got over 40,000 unique hits on Saturday. Over 50% of those hits came through Facebook. And he says this is a good indicator in who has a lot of momentum. And he mentions Scott Walker had that effect about a year ago. Ben Carson briefly in the fall. And for a very long time, Trump was essentially free traffic for any right-of-center political website. And then he goes on to point out, At South Carolina, at a Republican gathering over the weekend, Trump got booed when he criticized Ted Cruz. And he goes on to say, Cruz for six months said nothing but kind words about Trump. Every time that Trump even offhandedly suggested something critical of Cruz, Cruz just laughed it off. For six months, as other candidates attacked Trump, Cruz stood shoulder to shoulder with Trump. It annoyed a lot of people, but every poll out there shows it also had the effect of making Cruz the second choice for Trump voters and Carson's voters. And he goes on to say, suddenly Cruz found himself number one in Iowa. He also found himself number one in favorability among Republican voters. When Trump began attacking Ted Cruz, he was no longer attacking just anybody. Trump suddenly found himself attacking the most popular Republican in the field, as witnessed by the booing over the weekend. Will it change Donald Trump's polling numbers? Probably not. Uh, in fact, I, you know, I think that among Erickson and some of the other conservative Republicans who are firmly in the the, the Cruz, what you'd call Cruz crowd, uh, Trump, they, they ignore the numbers that Trump still has piled up. And nationally, Trump's figures are just awe-inspiring. He has more than a two-to-one lead over Cruz. Cruz is in second place. But the polling numbers show Trump's approval right now, or at least the support among Republicans, if those are Republicans entirely being polled, is somewhere in the neighborhood. I mean, this is what really caught my attention. Trump is just below 40%. Cruz is, I think, at 18. That makes Cruz number two. Now, if Cruz could score a knockout in Iowa, win by more than five or six points at the caucus, and then if he can hold his own in New Hampshire, where he has been trailing a lot of the other candidates badly, by the time he gets to South Carolina, he could pull out a victory. And then, it's funny how that works. People who who say that they, they make up their own minds and they're not influenced by anyone else, as soon as a candidate does well in three or four primaries, everyone says, oh, gee, I better get on the bandwagon now or otherwise my friends won't like me. So therefore, Cruz, if this actually works out this way, could start picking up some delegates and, and perhaps putting aside. And Trump's Trump's sale, that sale ability to the public that he has, that his, his pitch right now is that he is a guy who never loses. If he loses three out of four of these opening contests, then all of a sudden he doesn't look invincible anymore, and that could have a huge impact. Still, Trump is getting a great deal of support from areas that we haven't seen in over 35 years. 
This is Chris Matthews on his program on MSDNC talking to a fellow named Jonathan Allen from Roll Call, and he theorizes, or they theorize, that Trump could still smash Clinton in a general election. Knocking down Donald Trump. Yeah, he was like the response to Donald Trump. It was unbelievable. Yeah, well, well, can you give me some indication, if not the names of your sources, who really fear he can beat Hillary Clinton or beat any, any I mean, Democrat? There's Donald. absolutely a divide among the Democrats. There, is, there are some who think that he will still fail and fall, and some who believe that he has the lowest floor among the Republican candidates, that Hillary Clinton will wipe the floor with him if she's the nominee. Uh, but increasingly what I'm hearing from people is, is some concern uh, that he could attract some Democrats. He has the most un-Republican position. Oh, I think there's field. a lot of Reagan Democrats that's, waiting to vote for him. That's exactly uh, right. You look at the industrial Midwest, those yeah. are states that he could really compete in. Your home state of Pennsylvania. Oh, I think Pennsylvania Ohio. might might be in, well be in play if he's the nominee because he's unpredictable. Whereas you, you get Cruz up there, you put him over in the far right, Hillary takes the center back, right? Yes. And you win. Trump likes uh, the social safety net. He's been for higher taxes in the past. He's uh, good on LGBT. And he thinks the Iraq the war was insane. Exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chris Matthews theorizing, along with this fellow from Roll Call, uh, that Trump could indeed pick up votes from Democrats. And we are hearing that figure of 20% would bolt from the party to vote for Trump if he is the Republican nominee. So for all of the hand-wringing Republicans have been doing, maybe it's time to start thinking about how do we work with this guy or how do we work with Ted Cruz? Because frankly, it's not going to be any of the other guys they put up there. Great, great cartoon I saw over the weekend. Shows the debate stage, and it shows Cruz dressed as Dudley Do Right, and uh, and and <laughs> Trump is actually snidely whiplash, and uh, and he's saying to uh, Cruz is saying to Trump, "Stop calling me Dudley Do Wrong," but then in the same cartoon, there's Jeb Bush standing there with a vacant expression on his face. Jeb, who you may be asking? Twenty minutes after nine o'clock, and what about this Marco Rubio fellow? Well. Uh, Marco <clears throat> Amnesty Rubio had some interesting things to say on NBC over the weekend. We need to share that with you because I think we need to start disabusing ourselves of the notion that he should be our next president. 